Today we're gonna to be installing a two inch lift kit on my 1995 GMC Sierra. Now this is gonna be the same for any 88 through 98 Chevy or GMC truck. This kit is coming courtesy of Torch Off-Road. So let's dig into the box and show you what we got. See the unboxing, what comes in the kit. Ordered this from Torch Off-Road. I'll put a link down below. Um, I do have a discount code for you guys. So if you are interested in purchasing a similar kit, make sure to use the kit with the link below. It applies to anything at Torch Off-Road. They do not skimp on the packing material here. So when you buy this kit, you have a couple of options. Now what I wanted to do on my truck is I did not want a insanely tall lift kit. I just want, wanted something that made it look a little bit beefier without being crazy overkill. This kit allows you to adjust the lift in the front by one to three inches and you specify the rear blocks for the leaf springs based on how high you plan to pick up the truck. So in my case, you could go one through three inches. I chose the middle, so two inches. Now, these blocks are tapered, and that's a super nice thing because being that the blocks are tapered, that means it corrects your pinion angle, which we'll talk about in a second when you lift it. If these were just flat and you installed them and lifted up the rear of the truck, you would basically have some issues with your drive line where you're putting the, the rear end and the drive shaft at a sharper angle than it should be at. So, these come, it doesn't matter which way you put them in, we'll talk about that later. Um, the kit comes with longer U-bolts for the rear, uh, all new hardware, and it's locking hardware too, which is super nice. Now, in the front, these trucks have a torsion bar suspension, so you're gonna get torsion keys, which we'll unwrap here in a second and talk about those. But the really nice thing about this kit is that it comes with the tool that you need to safely get the tension off of your stock keys. Um, allowing you to remove the stock keys and safely do. Obviously it comes with instructions too. We're gonna run through all of that. Now, uh, the only other thing I'll say is as I'm doing this, I'm also gonna install a set of uh, front and rear shocks just because mine are old. You can also get those from Torch Off-Road Torch off if you like. Um, I just happen to have them here already. So they were going on in the first place. Already had them, gonna install them with the kit. Um, I did decide to go with new hardware for these. Just looking at my truck, it's pretty rusty underneath. So this will be a really good real life installation. We're not working on something that's been in the garage all its life, this truck has been used. Just so you can see a little bit further, we've got everything unwrapped here. So again, new U-bolts. Here is the tool that I was talking about. Um, so this is gonna allow you to safely remove the torsion keys. Um, it comes with this little adapter that goes in up here, I presume, and that will allow you to get everything aligned correctly. We've got the new keys right here in front of us. Um, you've got a spot to lift from and a spot to adjust from. Um, and all the instructions, color-coded instructions, which is always great to see. Um, and then they come with some stickers. And basically, you know, if you need to get a hold of them, give them a call. I'll tell you what, I've talked to these guys through Instagram and through email already, and they are super responsive. Like any question I've had, they've gotten back to me almost immediately, even on weekends. So that's fantastic. So um, you're going to see me first things first. We're going to take a lot of measurements on the stock truck, and then we're going to go in and start disassembling everything. So we have a great starting One point. big tip that I will give you is earlier in the week, I knew I was going to be doing this. So I went with some PB Blaster. You can use WD-40, whatever else. Get in there and spray everything down that you're going to touch. Um, I did that on Wednesday. Now it's Friday. So, and then I hit it again last night. So hopefully that will help us out. This is a 95 model with 180,000 miles on it. Um, I suspect it's gonna fight me a little bit. Now, the first thing you're gonna see me do is go around each corner and basically I'm gonna get a measurement from the tire to the wheel well, front and back, all four sides. Um, I'll probably also get a measurement off the ground too, just in case. I'm gonna write all that stuff down. Uh, when we get underneath the truck and we start doing things with the rear end, the front end, we're gonna mark where you know shackles are at mark where things are at just so we know when we go to put it back together that we're not getting anything too far out of alignment now when we're all done with the lift i highly recommend you guys getting in alignment you definitely should do that but just for the sake of getting things put back together in the same manner that they came apart we're going to mark stuff first so i'll set up the time lapse we'll go ahead start getting all those measurements on the truck
So we wrapped up our measurements. Now don't get hung up on these specific numbers because they're obviously specific to the tire and wheel and everything on this specific truck, but it's a good starting point. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do real quick is just kind of bounce on this front end slightly. Um, just to get an idea for how stiff it is in the front right now. One of the things they talk about when you're doing anything with the torsion keys is you wanna be careful that you don't crank them up too high. So I chose a two inch lift. You can go to three, but my thought is I won't be putting as much strain on the keys and thus probably have a little bit better ride quality in the front. Um, but also it kind of depends on how you set it up. So uh, we're gonna get a kind of just rough starting feel. This truck rides pretty good right now. Um, so we're going to go ahead, kind of press on it a little bit. And again, we'll be doing new shocks in the front, which are longer too, which should help. Uh, but again, we just don't want to sacrifice too much ride quality. From what I've heard, that's not an issue. Just want to get a good starting point. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then we'll throw the time lapse back on, get the truck jacked up in the back, because I think I'm going to tackle the rear first. Just go and bounce on the front just a little bit. Tell you what, as far as I know, this thing is stock right now. And it's kind of stiff, so who knows, maybe somebody went and cranked up these keys to start with to get us the lift to fit these tires, I don't know. We might wind up with a better ride when all is said and done. Okay, we got her jacked up. Now normally, chances are if you're doing, you know, tires or something on your truck, you jack it up and you support it from the axle. We can't do that because we got to undo the axle to get the lift kit in. So, um, the frame on these trucks kind of curves up as they go up over by the rear wheels. Rather than put the jack sands there where it's on an angled surface, I chose to move them forward. Now, the only thing I'll say with this from a safety standpoint is you've got a little more chance up for the truck to teeter when you do this. So I'm gonna leave the jack under there the whole time. I've got jack stands under the back just in case for some reason was to come loose, the axle would land on the jack stands. Um, just be extra careful when you do this. All right, hopefully you guys can see in here, we've got the wheels removed on both sides. These are the U-bolts uh, we're gonna be removing. And I'm gonna take special care since this part will come loose, this bottom section here. I'm gonna mark with a scribe where it is on the axle just so I know I can get it lined back up. Um, I've watched a couple videos on this. You do wanna make sure that these get lined up. There's like a little divot here on the tops of the springs for those to ride in. You don't want them cocked because you know you don't really get the rear of your truck aligned, but if you get this messed up, you can get some weird crab walking action going. So take your time here and we'll do that. We're gonna follow the instructions they gave, so we are going to undo the rear uh, lower shock mounts. Now, the R shocks are gonna be coming out, so you'll see me do a few extra steps that you won't have to do unless you're replacing rear shocks. Um, we'll kind of gloss through those since this is mostly just a video on how to install the lift kit itself. So we'll grab our impact, start undoing those, make sure you've still got your jack underneath your rear end and some jack stands there for safety. When you undo this, it will wanna come down. Okay, so, um, these are the bolts we're gonna be undoing right here. And the shock bolt, and I hit these with some rust penetrant before. I've got my big Milwaukee, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. I think they tell you to undo these first and uh, make sure you got your floor jack supporting the rear end so nothing drops down. Um, I might readjust my jack just looking at it to get it a little bit better angle. And uh, we'll go ahead and start working. addition to scribing the line, I actually measured from here to here and confirmed it was three and three quarters of an inch on both sides. So I know when I reinstall this, I'm going to put it to the exact same spot. Time for the old breaker bar. Okay, well, that solved that one problem. Not the way I love to do it though. It's 
So unfortunately, disregard this. Um, unrelated to the install of the lift kit, this line I think was just brittle and moving the suspension up and down caused it to break, um, which is super odd. It's not like it was drooping and causing strain or anything like that because it's connected to the rest of the axle. It just snapped off right, right over here. So have to replace that, disregard that for now. Um, I wanna show you a couple things. So before we talked about the taper. So this side is shorter than the other side. There's a nipple here, so there's a male side, there's a female side. If you look on your purchase here, there's a male and a female. I don't think I need to explain that any further, but I will. Um, you want the male to go in the female and the female to go in the male, and you want the thinner spot to be towards the front of the vehicle. Okay, just hit pause on the time lapse and explain what I'm doing. A couple things to look at. You wanna make sure that your new U-bolts are riding in this little indentation here on the top of your leaf springs. See that one's starting to come out? I'm gonna have to tap that with the hammer, bring it back. The other thing down here, it's kinda of hard to see. I don't really wanna put my finger in there, but there's your little nipple from your leaf spring that goes into your new lifts, whatever you wanna call these pieces right here, your blocks. Um, you wanna make sure those are lined up. You also, wanna make sure the distance is correct side to side. So I measured from here to here earlier, that was three and three quarters. I'm gonna to have to measure again and likely move the axle. And then last, you wanna make sure when you're tightening these up that you're doing them all at the same time. You don't wanna run one all the way in and then come back and you wanna do them evenly, okay? Think like you're installing wheels and tires on your car, you wanna do it evenly. So take your time. Um, the good news now is that your weight is supported by your U-bolts. And the jack is really just there at this point to kind of get your, so you're not putting a ton of stress on your driveway. I went and moved this forward to angle it up to get these more in line, otherwise they were tilted way far down. So we'll go back and forth each side, taking our time, get it all close. Okay, we got her down. Um, got the new shocks in the rear, really not too bad. Uh, I am gonna have to replace that brake line on the passenger side, which is a huge bummer because otherwise this would not be too hard. Um, Anyways, unrelated to the kit, but we got it back weighted down, sitting on the rear axle now. We pulled the jack stands out from under the frame, it's sitting on the rear axle. Now that we have it weighted, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start torquing everything. You really don't wanna torque any kind of shocks or anything that articulates until it's sort of in its position where it wants to live. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, and then they recommend driving around for about 300 miles, tank of gas coming back and retorquing everything. I think that's a really smart idea. All right, so the torque spec for the U-bolts will depend on the diameter of the U-bolt. If you were doing your rear shocks, this nut over here on this side, 74 foot-pounds, and then the nuts up there at the top, which are gonna be super hard to see. I was gonna show you what I mean. They are the ones that attach up here, are gonna be 13 foot-pounds, not very much for those. Now that the back is all wrapped up, good time, take a break, get some lunch, whatever. I came back, jacked up the front. I know it's hard to tell, but the front tire is off the ground. I'm also pulling the front tires off so I have access to the shocks um, because I'm gonna replace the front shocks. And if for some reason you gotta tap on the torsion bar in the front to break it loose, if it's kind of seized in place there, it just gives you a little bit more breathing room. So go ahead, jack up the front, put it on jack stands underneath the frame and go ahead, pull off the front left and right tires. Okay, let's talk torsion bars. So. This is your torsion bar right here. Your stock key is in here. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the tool to press up on here to release the load with no load on the suspension. Everything's just dangling right now. Where there's still a lot of tension in the key and in the torsion bar. So we're gonna get the tool, we're gonna put it in here, we're gonna lift up and then we're gonna back this off. But first thing I'm gonna do, um, we are gonna take measurements. We're gonna figure out this measurement right here from the edge of this little piece right there to right here. That gives us exactly how many threads are showing. I'm also gonna go ahead and mark the bottom, like 12 o'clock on the torsion bar. I've seen a lot of videos where people knock these out 
And I always wonder if they move, and if you get them off by one, you could have your torsion bars not set up correctly. So we're gonna take some measurements first. I'll take you back to my measurement sheet and uh, show you what I found. Okay, just in case it wasn't clear, what I'm talking about here is the measurement from where this bottom's out to the underside of the bolt head. I'm gonna do this for both sides. I'll put the camera down, mark this down on a piece of paper. So when you get your tool for space saving, they have this part flipped up, up in here. Unthread it, thread it in the other way, and then we'll take it over the truck. And I'll show you how it gets installed. And you can see the torsion bar bolts are not the same on each side. So the driver was an inch and a 16th. This is an inch and five sixteenth. And the truck did sit kind of different height wise side to side. So. Let's go ahead and install this. Okay, so your torsion bar tool goes up over your cross member, like so. There's a little indentation up here, which is what this little guy rides in. So you just gotta find that. It's gonna be kind of more of a feel type situation. I've got it in there right now. Now I can take the tool. This is gonna keep the tool from walking around on me. Okay, now I've got it in. Now, if you look on your key, see that little indentation? That's where the tool's gonna go. So I'm gonna set the camera down, get it all set up, and then I'll show you what I mean. It's kind of hard to do um, with, with one pair of hands. Just keep twisting. Could probably use a drill for this. Take our punch here, your hammer, and uh, try and drive this torsion bar forward. Okay, so once you've removed the old the torsion bar out far enough that you can get the new key in then what you're going to do is put the new key in you want to try and make sure it's in the same orientation now it's going to be hanging down lower than the other one because you know it's meant for the lift kit so it's not going to be exactly the same but try and match up the flats in the same spot making sure you know as best you can that you got everything there slide this over make sure you line up the little nipple of the tool into the key. Slide it in through there. Okay. Bolt. Put some anti seize on it. And we're going to tighten that back up to whatever the measurement was before. So in my case, it was an inch and an inch and uh, I think it was one and a sixteenth, but yours may vary. So I am at one and nine sixteenths, which is too much. So we're gonna run it in a little bit. Inch and eighth, go a little bit further here. And again, we're just trying to get it back to the factory settings. We'll probably have to adjust from there. Okay, I have to hit pause here because I can't in good faith not give you this tip. As you can see, I'm a little ragged right now. And the reason I'm ragged is I had a heck of a time trying to get that torsion bar to move forward into the control arm and ultimately it wouldn't move. So this is a super easy install if you don't have a rusted truck. If you do have a rusted truck, this can be super difficult. It has nothing to do with the lift kit itself. In fact, the keys slide onto the old torsion bar super easily. You don't even have to pound them on. It's great. That's not the issue. The issue is the torsion bars being rusted, in my case, to the control arms. Let me show you a tip because I looked all over the internet and everyone had an opinion. Oh, use heat. Tried that. Use an air hammer. Tried that. Get a bigger hammer. Tried that. Hit it from the front with a pipe and a sledgehammer. Tried that could not get it to move. But then I was I realized I was looking at it wrong. There's a simple way to remove this, and this will really help you guys if you ever run into this issue. So in my case, I had basically the torsion bar, you know, the old torsion bar to the key were stuck, 
and in the front it was stuck. But what I realized is if that front is stuck at the control arm, it's never coming out if it's truly seized. But there are three bolts on each side which hold this entire cross member in. And if you have access to an air hammer, you can get an air hammer blade in here and hit it against this key. And let me tell you, trying to knock the key off of the torsion bar is much easier than trying to drive the entire torsion bar into the control arm. So what you can wind up doing, mark everything, your positions of everything, so you know, you know what's what, but you can undo all the bolts on each side, take an air hammer and drive it back. And basically the entire cross member is gonna slide backwards towards the gas tank. Don't worry, you've got enough room and the keys will drop out. And then the reverse, I put any C's on the keys and then you can basically slide them up into place and carefully just slide the cross member with the keys inside of it back on and bolt it up. This is gonna save you, no joke, probably a day if you're fighting that, that spot up there in the front and it's stuck. Truck is fully lifted, it's the next day. I had to get it back together just so I could drive it to work. Um, but we still need to do the final fine tuning. So I set up the torsion bar keys just like they were removed from the measurements I took of the keys when they came off. Now that I've had a chance to drive it around, that light to come back on, now that I've had a chance to drive it around, um, you need to go and measure the four corners again. And then this will give you two things. First, you can see how much it lifted it versus your original settings. You can determine it's advertised as a two inch lift. Maybe it's a little bit higher, we'll see. But the big thing is now I'll be able to go and fine tune those torsion bars in the front so that I get the lift that I want and they're even side to side. In case it wasn't clear before, the technique that I'm using here is I'm going from the center of the bottom of the wheel well. I'm using a level that way. I can make sure that everything is perfectly level here. And then you get a measurement using a tape measure from the bottom or the top, it doesn't really matter, down to the ground. And that lets me know how much the truck was raised. Once you know your height in the front, what you'll want to do is jack up your truck, set it on jack stands, and now you can fine tune the torsion keys to get the side to side height even in the front. Okay, back underneath the truck, got the front end supported. We're gonna come up here with our 18 millimeter and because this side, you could go either way. You could either raise one side or lower one side. We're over two inch lift, which is what we were shooting for on both sides. So what I'm gonna wind up doing is lowering this just to be a little bit safer on the drive line and everything. We're gonna take one full turn out of this, then kind of drive the truck back and forth, remeasure, and see if that solved our issue and got both sides to be the same height. Okay, so we ran our test. Uh, backed out one, actually, sorry, two full turns on the passenger side, remeasured. And two full turns got me to where I am within a quarter of an inch or so. But when you adjust one side, it also kind of adjusts both sides. So I gained a quarter of an inch on one side, lost it on the other. I'm getting closer. Um, I had about a half an inch before from side to side. So I'm gonna go make another adjustment. But before I do that, one thing I thought of is, since I'm getting it aligned anyway, let's go ahead and make sure I have the correct tire pressure in each tire so that's not skewing my results at all. I think you guys got the idea. Go back side to side, play with those adjustments, get it as level as you want. Um, you can sit there forever and try and get it perfect. Keep in mind, it's gonna depend on how much gas is in the tank because your gas tank's on one side, whether you're in it or not, all these different things. I got mine to within like a 16th or an eighth, eighth of an inch on each side, call it good. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to go get an alignment, but let me just give you some pictures here to show you what the truck looks like after the lift kit, and let me tell you my initial thoughts after driving around both last night and I drove it to work today, which included some freeway driving. First off, the big thing, I'm sure a lot of people are interested, does cranking up the torsion keys or installing different keys in the front, does that affect the ride quality? In my case, it does not. I installed new shocks, and I can tell you that my old shocks, while old, were not totally blown. I could take them and press them in and they would return, so they weren't like they were totally blown out shocks. After installing this kit from Torch Off-Road, honestly, the ride is basically the same. It, 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 the first night I thought it was better. Um, there was a little bit of snow on the roads, so maybe that was a little bit softer. I can't tell a difference, so that's great. I was a little worried initially that maybe this thing was gonna ride rougher. It doesn't. So if you're on the fence about ride quality with a Torch Off-Road kit, don't worry about it. Go ahead and buy it. It's going to ride totally fine. Second, 
Do you get the height that they say you're going to get? Yes, you actually wind up getting a little bit more. Um, I think I was about two and three eighths to two and a half inches, um, and I specified their two inch kit. So if you want to get more height, which I'm sure that's probably what most people want, um, you can definitely get it. I'm sure if you option a three inch kit, you'd get more than three. And I could crank the front up higher, much higher if I wanted to, um, and certainly get more height in the front. But at the end of the day, I'm really happy with how the truck turned out. Um, the install is not difficult at all from a part standpoint. The instructions are clear. Um, they provide support if you have questions. It's a great kit, no issues there. Um, but if you're dealing with an old rusty truck, then you will run into some issues. Just take your time. That's totally separate from the lift kit itself. Finally, if you like this video and you're interested in buying the kit, you can get 10% off Torch Off-Road. Use the link below to get that 10% off. I'm pretty sure that applies to everything on their website, not just this specific lift kit. Um, but yeah, we'll flip around. We'll show you some final pictures of the truck in the snow. It looks super tough with this two inch lift kit, even though these aren't even 33s on there, but this truck looks awesome. Really appreciate the guys at Torch Off-Road for hooking me up with this kit. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You'll see more stuff like this next time on Truck and Roll. See you guys.